Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tabor Talk. So, happy Halloween, everyone. Saturday here in the Catskills. Halloween, a couple of more days, right? Tuesday coming up, November 3rd. So, I'm going to play a clip from Kyle Kalinske. By the way, pardon the video audio. It's not exactly synced up. Uh, I'm in the process of uh, rectifying that. Uh, so anyway, I've been hearing all, you know, from all these right wing assholes, what about this Hunter Biden thing and all the corruption? Why isn't the mainstream media covering it? You know, so if I have to kind of laugh, like just think about the last four years, you know, this fucking asshole with Trump. So let me just analogize this. It's kind of like, uh, you know, like you have a, a, a murderer and, uh, you're concerned about a jaywalker, right? So, uh, Watch this, and then I'll talk afterwards. Many mainstream news outlets have refused to report on the Hunter Biden story that came from the New York Post. And um, the Washington Post actually admitted what went into that decision in a moment of brutal honesty. Now, before we get to that, I'll show you what they say, which is just honestly, it's a stunning line that they wrote down. Um, but let's talk about this Hunter Biden story, because I have so much to say about it, even though we've already touched on it. When the original story came out in the New York Post, I passed on it. I didn't want to talk about it. I saw it in the morning, and I, and I was like, should I cover this for my show? And then I went through it, and I was like, I'm not going to cover it. Now, you might say, oh, what are you, are you trying to like cover for Hunter and Joe? No, of course not. I've gone after them previously. I've called out the Burisma thing. I think it's clearly corruption. The reason why I originally passed on it was twofold. Number one, we already knew all the stuff about Burisma, and this was just the emails that showed the inner mechanics of it. I don't really care about the mechanics of it. I know it's corrupt. I said it was corrupt from the beginning. So if you show me emails that just show the dynamics of it, I'll be like, yeah, but that's an old story. We know about the Burisma thing. We know about the corruption. So we already knew the story. That's thing number one. Thing number two is they coupled it together with those pictures that were just a violation of his privacy. And I was like, I'm not going to cover it and show the pictures because I don't think these pictures should have been released. There's no news value in it. You're not learning anything. So I passed on the story. I was like, okay, New York Post, I see what you're getting at here, but I'm going to pass on it. It was only after the show that Twitter censored the New York Post story, and then I was forced to talk about it, because what am I going to do? Now the story is not even what happened with Hunter. Now the story is the censorship from social media companies. So this is the Streisand effect, as they call it. You made the story bigger by trying to bury it. That's what happened. Now, what are my feelings on today? Basically the same. You want to you wanna leak on corruption. I'm right there with you. That's newsworthy. That's important. That should be exposed. But you want to keep showing private personal pictures. I'm not with you. Like there's a sex tape or something that just came out of Hunter Biden. There's no news value in that. There's no news value in that. You're not owning Joe Biden. If anything, you're just assholes and making people feel more sympathetic to them. So the personal stuff out of bounds, they shouldn't release it. But that should be, like, the news outlet should be intelligent enough to make that journalistic decision. You don't have the government step in and ban that. It's more of, do your job as journalists and determine what is and isn't newsworthy. Now, so that's the problem, you know, with the, with the New York Post, and they ran the pictures, probably shouldn't have run it. Right-wing hacks, I think it may have been Bannon, not sure, though, who got the hand on the sex tape and released the Hunter sex tape. Ridiculous. Okay, don't do that. But then you have the flip side problem, which is, what do you do with all these legacy media outlets, Washington Post and others, who don't want to discuss the Hunter stuff at all, even the emails of the corruption? Well, then you have them admit it. Take a look. A close look at the evidence shows that neither Biden nor Trump have the facts on their side for now. Take a step back, and the Russian interference of 2016 holds valuable lessons on what to do and what not to do in 2020. We must treat the Hunter Biden leaks as if they were a foreign intelligence operation, even if they probably aren't. So default to, we have no evidence that this is some sort of foreign intelligence operation, but treat it like it's a foreign intelligence operation. And in other words, don't talk about it. Don't cover it. Okay, by this standard, you don't cover the Panama Papers. You don't cover... Um, the exposing of war crimes that we got from WikiLeaks and Julian Assange through Chelsea Manning. You don't cover the Snowden leaks, learning about the NSA stuff. If this is the way you approach these things, we're just going to assume it's a hostile foreign intelligence operation and not run it because then it's election interference or something.
By the way, just, even if you grant, well, maybe the information originally came from a nefarious source. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. If it's true, it is newsworthy. Your job is to report the facts. Now, again, you can make editorial judgments on whether or not there's news value in it, but clearly there is news value in corruption, in corruption-related stories. So, bottom line, really what they're saying is, listen, we want Joe Biden to win. We support Joe Biden and the corporate Democrats. And so we're going to work backwards from that conclusion and not run stuff that might hurt his campaign. And really, this line of thinking probably originated after 2016, where they thought, oh my God, the fact that we reported on her emails, the fact that we, you know, showed the WikiLeaks stuff really hurt them. Now, by the way, they didn't show it nearly enough, but they did show it. Because at least back then, they were like, we're journalists. We're, I mean, what are we going to do? This is our job. There's a lot of newsworthy stuff in here. Like when Hillary said, I have public and private positions. You tell people what they want to hear, and then you do business as usual behind the scenes. You know, we need totally free and open trade borders. This is something she said when the conversation was TPP. Yeah, we need totally free and open trade borders, which would lead to incredible outsourcing, a giant increase in outsourcing. These were all important stories. These were all newsworthy. That's what it was. And so, and so your job as a journalist is to run it. It's newsworthy. Now you have mainstream media outlets saying, I don't care that it's newsworthy. I'm not going to report on it. And my weak excuse will be, even if there's a small chance it's a foreign intelligence operation, that's why I'm not going to run it. They're admitting it probably isn't. They're admitting there's no evidence to believe that it's from Russia or whatever. But they're like, let's just use that as a crutch to not cover the thing that's going to hurt our preferred candidate. The thing that's so frustrating is... They're, They're pretending, pretending like this is some sort of objective, neutral, you know, serious person decision when really they're just partisan hacks. Now, final point is this, because some people might listen to this so far and be like, might not agree with me. OK, it, it, the video audio is actually worse than I thought. You know what? Just just listen to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to fix this. So anyway, here we are. Specifics. Right. So you're talking about Hunter Biden and uh, Kyle Kalinske with some detail. I hate Trump just as much as you do. But the way you cover this is, hey, here's the stuff with news value in the Hunter leaks, right? You could None of the personal pictures, I agree, don't run that. Got it. Here's the stuff that's legit. Here's the corruption angle of it. Here's the information on that. Trump is using this as his main line of attack against Biden. It's not working. One of the reasons why it's probably not working is, here's, all, here's a detailed breakdown of the Trump family corruption. Trump made $73 million from foreign investors as president. And then, oh, would you look at that? A lot of the stuff he does happens to benefit foreigners. So, you know, for example, there is a business relationship between Trump and Saudi Arabia through his hotel in D.C. And then he turns around and gives a multi-billion dollar weapons deal to Saudi Arabia. He used to blame them for 9-11. Now he's giving them weapons deals that they're using for a genocide in Yemen. That's corruption. Jared and Ivanka made $135 million in one year in 2018. Let's go look at the source of all that money and then who they're doing favors for in return. We already know, because there's been reporting on some of it, what's happening with Israel, him taking money from Israeli banks, for example, and then they're super serving Israel in terms of the policy direction that we go. So in other words, you could say, here's the corruption with Hunter and Joe in Ukraine, and here's the sketchy thing and how we got the payment and... All that. You can and should report on that. But you could also say the Trump family is just as corrupt, if not more corrupt, and here are the details of that. Instead of doing that, what do they do? They don't bring up the Trump corruption, and they just don't report on the Biden corruption. So they're partisan hacks, and they, and they pretend like they're not, and it's disgusting, and it's so sad that as a fucking clowns, I don't want to be the person who's like the adult in the room who is giving the more serious take. I'm just an asshole. Like, what am I? What am I? I'm like a commentator slash jokester. I'm like a semi-comedian with how I do my show. And I'm gonna supposed to be the serious one to tell you here's how they're messing up. It's ridiculous. It's a joke. So they should be ashamed of themselves. This is not how you do it. And um, the media culture is totally broken in this country beyond repair. I don't think there's any hope for mainstream media ever getting back to any semblance of rationality. But the way it's supposed to work is that which has news value is what you run with. It doesn't even matter what the source is. It can actively be somebody who's hostile and saying, I have nefarious motives. It doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter. If it's newsworthy, you're supposed to run with it, and they're not doing it because they want to protect Biden, and it's really sad.